All right. We should be live now. Everything should be going. Hopefully nothing's fucking up like last time. <laughs> last time I streamed, uh, I did it right after. Literally, I did it like minutes after I restarted. Um, restarted, my bad. Updated Windows 10. And we all know Windows 10 is fucking trash garbage. I don't know how Windows 11 is. I haven't even tried that yet, but it's probably just as bad. And the moment you update Windows 10, it just loves fucking with everything in your settings. Just loves doing a lot of dumb shit and just fucking up your computer. Like, God damn it. Like, really? <laughs> so I went through that today, right? So hopefully, I won't be having any problems tonight when it comes to streaming because last time was a goddamn travesty and I really didn't feel like it really ruined my whole entire mood that night I'm not gonna lie like I didn't feel like playing the game <laughs> but we're back with more great ace attorney where we last left off we started uh, act 5 chapter 5 whatever the hell you want to call it episode 5 in which we went downstairs to the uh, pawnbrokery shop that you see in the background right now to go talk to Mr. Wendy Banks because dumbass fucking Sherlock Holmes, my bad, Herlock Schlums, like went and got the wrong item because he's an idiot. And while we were down there, we ran into, um, I forgot her name already, Gina. That's her name. We ran into Gina, who was the uh, pickpocket from from the uh, McGilda trial. And she was trying to, she was trying to recover some stuff that belonged to the late McGilded, who died in that, that wonderful, wonderful, brilliant fire, right? While she was doing that, uh, some Chad Wellington looking motherfucker who went by the names of Eggs Benedict, who's, I, I don't know if we actually revealed his real name yet, cause I, I don't remember. <laughs> But he went by, my bad, Eggs Benedict. He went by Edgar Benedict, uh, Benedict. Even though he looks like Chad Wellington, but whatever. We'll, we'll just look past that. He came in and tried to scam her. Out of a coat that didn't belong to her. Right? He was caught red-handed. Pulled the gun out on us. And then Mr. Winnie Bings threatened to shoot himself. <laughs> Again. People are crazy out here. In the world of Ace Attorney. Right, but luckily, Gregson showed up in time due to a uh, to a wonderful secret police button that was under the count that was under the counter of the shop that Mr. Wendy Banks so graciously pressed, and uh, and Gregson showed up in time, but unfortunately, fucking uh, a uh, Edgar Benedict made a daring escape, and as far as we know, he has not been captured. So, now the mystery is afoot. <laughs> it's a foot or a gun. Whatever you want to go with. But we're back with more Ace Attorney. Hopefully tonight, I have more confidence and I can actually read big words that scare me. Big words are very scary. They're taller than me. I'm a very little short man. 15th of April, Baker Street. See? That's why I hate grown-ups. All they do is feed you a pack of lies and take stuff away from you. Ain't that the truth? Oh really, Miss Lestrade? Tell me. Is that overcoat keeping you warm? Oh, she got oh, she got to keep the coat? Well, I mean coat's coat. I, I think what she really wanted was the uh the uh music disc that was inside the coat. What? Oh my Surely you were surely you were given that. Yeah. The D the D lit? Oh, the D? The D. Alright. The D let me keep it. After look after look uh shit, I can't even damn it. <laughs> yeah, the D let me keep it after I looked daggers at him for long enough. He went through the pockets and said, go on then, have it, before telling me to scrap her. Telling me to scrap her. What? Scaper. Scrapper? Always pays off, giving people a look that you hate them. 
I can't help feeling that it's gonna it's gonna get you into some serious trouble one day. I mean, one day we got a gun pulled out on us, all because of you. What I really want was the nice shiny disc, mind. Uh, my what? What I really wanted was the nice shiny discs, mind. Mine? Mine. Alright. The music box disc? Mr. Winniebank said it was particularly worthless. I think I'm gonna go and have another bash. Give him a long, hard stare. I think not, Miss Lestrade. We shan't enter Mr. Winniebank's again today. We shan't, shan't. <laughs> Why not? That's not fair. It can't be helped, I'm afraid. The police are investigating the scene now and taking a statement from Mr. Winniebanks. <laughs> More Ace Attorney. Yes, we are back. <laughs> but the disc is mine. I had to take it for the coat, and it was in the coat's pocket. And there should have been something else in all. That's what that rotten cove said, ain't it? Yes, he did mention something about another article, didn't he? Well then, that's mine too. Whatever it is. Now she's really pushing her luck. Miss Lestrade, I think it's time to admit defeat. You've had your haul for the day. Yeah, and it's all your fault, Shlomes. Damn you, Shlomes! <laughs> yeah, how's it going, Breezy? Nice to see you again. So what are your plans now? Will you dine with us this evening? Huh? Yeah, Gina, you're our friend now. I, I guess Gina's supposed to fill the role of like, of like the little uh, street beggar boy that sh uh, that Holmes, in, in the novels, that uh, Sherlock Holmes would always be like, here's some pennies, you little orphan. Fucking go find some information on the street and come back to me so I can make the big bucks. Iris would be delighted to cook, I'm sure, and I might entertain you with the modest violin recital. Ah, come on, Gina, you're practically one of us. Get your ass over here. Huh. No, ta. No, ta. I guess no thanks. Oh. Why would I come around your place, huh? Have you lost your head or something? What? Check your pockets. Check your pockets. She fucking split it way too fast. Check your damn pockets. Uh. You bombed your chem final and C's get degrees, so that's alright with me. You mean like, you got C's on the final, or you failed it? Because if you got C's, it's fine. I mean, you pass, you pass, you get the degree. I don't think any fucking job would look at it and be like, Oh, how dare you not get to A on your finals? Uh, we only accept the most, the most promising of students. Also cramming notes for your physics tomorrow. Jesus, too many goddamn finals. School sucks. <laughs> No, you got to see in the class, so that's cool. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. If you pass, you pass. No one cares how you did it, right? You know how many people in positions of power nowadays are completely fucking morons? Like, <laughs> you just walk up to them and just prove them wrong. Oh, dear. She's gone. And so is my wallet. Hmm. I haven't revealed on... I haven't revealed. Why the hell did I say that? Haven't reviled on me quite unnecessarily, I might add. I can't help wondering if perhaps she might turn up anyways. Interesting. Once she had a chance to calm down, I think there's a good chance she'll decide to come. Very well then. I'll inform Iris to set a place for our potential guest at the din at the diner table? Why was I gonna say that? At the dinner table this evening. The diner table, yes. And one more thing. I should be glad of your company later, too. Sorry? I believe I will have a rather splendid surprise to show you. Oh, how exciting. What is it? You shall have to wait and see, Mr. Sato. Until later, then. Oh, I thought... I don't know. For some reason, I thought they were going to take us with them. Well, I mean, where the fuck else are we gonna go? I, I guess we're just heading back up to our, uh, to our little hum humble abode. I don't... Unless we're supposed to 
they hang out with Shlomes already. Because he said see you later, but what, what do you mean? Like, are we just going to walk up there and be like, we're here now? Okay, that's kind of weird. <laughs> see you later. We're going to the same place, Shlomes. See you later. Ah, uh, Susie and Runo, come in, come in. Good afternoon, Iris. Thank you so much for breakfast this morning. I didn't even get to finish my breakfast. You guys fucking yanked me out the door. Oh, don't mention it. Goodness. Look at the time already. Busy as always. I am. I'm preparing everything for dinner this evening. Already? You're obviously cooking something special, are you? First thing you do after all tomorrow's finals, besides nap, is replay this game. Oh, you beat this already. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm still, I'm still kind of like, I mean, I loved everything that happened in, uh, so far the highlight for this game for me is, um, everything that happened in the previous trial. Because I feel like that one had, like, more energy going for it, even though it wasn't that serious of a problem. <laughs> I mean, like, it was, compared to everything else that happens in the whole Phoenix Wright universe, it wasn't that serious of a problem, right? Because at the end of the day, no one died, right? And the fucking, it was all a mistake and misunderstanding, but, you know. <laughs> so far, I'm just, I'm hoping everything comes together at the end. I really am. Because this one has a, kind of a slow, uh, slow moving slow moving level of tension I guess meanwhile you look back on the trilogy right you look back on the uh, the first trilogy and it's all like you're here you're here what are you doing here Jesus why is everybody always involved in something <laughs> man I miss uh I miss um Shit, for some reason I can't remember her name right now. Why the, what the fuck is wrong with me? I can't remember her name. Francesca. There we go. Wow, that was weird. I miss her. I miss her and her wonderful whip. Still can't believe she's fucking 5'4". That girl looked like she's 5'8". <laughs> like, she's only 5'4". What? <laughs> no fucking way. Such, such fucking presence. And such a little body. <laughs> Oh yes, after all, we have special guests joining us. That saying much, it's a joy. Okay. Game-wise. Guess who it is? Go on. You'll never guess. Um. Look at those little eyes of her shining. Oh dear. It is awkward when you already know the answer, isn't it? It's Genie! <laughs> isn't that exciting? Yeah. Oh, what a surprise. Yeah, that's a wonderful news. Wow, Iris seemed overjoyed at the idea. I can't wait to learn and I can't wait to learn some pickpocketing tips from a real professional. I can't wait to become a fucking thief! It's gonna be cool. Oh yes, that does sound like fun. Stealing from people. I'm not sure that's entirely appropriate. Are you missing out a photo? I don't know. Is it Susato? Tell me what the fuck was on that telegram. Mm. By the way, Iris, what's Mr. Sloan's up to? You just look in the corner, he's like furiously jacking off. <laughs> like, what are you doing, Sloan's? Cut it out! Hurley? Oh, he's been like that ever since he got back. Hello, Mr. Sloan's. I beg that you won't speak to me. Uh, I'm sorry? I don't know who you are, but kindly take your leave. As you can see, I am not here. This isn't the slums that you're looking for. <laughs> Jedi mind tricks out here. I don't know how to respond to that. I do apologize. When he gets like this, he's completely oblivious to everything. Iris, you're a smart little lad. I don't think you know what the word oblivious means. Because obviously, he realized that I'm there. He's just being an asshole. Yes, I see. Really? He behaves just like a child sometimes, Hurley does. Mr. Sloan's and Iris has something of a parent and child relationship, don't they? Yes, except that Iris is clearly the parent. Come to think of it, 
I wonder where her real parents are. What's the matter, Runo? You have ever such a funny look on your face. Oh, oh no, it's uh, nothing. I know what it is. Why does this girl live here with Mr. Sloans, you're wondering? Am I right? How, how did you know? Are you Pearl's ancestor? Are you out here doing fucking Jedi mind tricks? Are you reading my thoughts? <laughs> oh, Runo, I can read you like a book. Uh, this girl is dangerous. Don't worry, you can ask me anything. I don't mind. All right. Well, if I can ask you anything, then tell me about this. Would you mind if I showed you this, Iris? It's just a boring old thing, really, but. Oh, I don't really like boring things. <laughs> My dead friend gave it to me. How dare you? Uh. It looks like Japanese modesty is easily misinterpreted by young Western children. I mean, who does like boring things? No one wants to be shown something boring. Come to think of it, you're always introducing things with, this is boring, but it's a bad habit. You should stop it. I'll be sure to let the entire population of the Empire of Japan know of my return. Damn. Hmm. What is Iris if Pearl is Palpatine? Uh, whatever the fuck came before Palpatine. Like, whoever the fuck Palpatine killed. Which, uh, which Sith was that? I remember, like, in the prequels, he talks to fucking, uh, Anakin or whatever, and he's like, Have you ever heard of Lord whatever the fuck? And he talks about how he was all powerful and that his apprentice killed him. And that was basically Palpatine telling him that he killed his master. So, by, by Ginny, you mean... By Jenny, you mean Miss Lestrade, the young woman from the McGilda case two months ago, right? The one who still has your fucking gun and keeps pointing it at me. Yes, who else stole my experimental smoke grenade launcher? Although, after that trial, I invited her back here and we had dinner together. And now we're the best of friends. Oh, what a lovely tale. Yes. Now if I bump into her on the streets, she runs away as fast as she can. <laughs> she said, don't let me catch your ass out in the street. I know you got a gun on you. It's about to pop off. Oh, okay. And I chased her down the back alleys with my gun. Interesting idea of friendship. And then I let her have the latest color of smoke grenade. Oh my god, for real. <laughs> So you're just walking in the streets, and she's minding her own business, right? Or getting ready to steal off of someone's pockets, and then you just hear, Hey, you! She turns around like, what? <laughs> and then the smoke grenade goes off, and she starts booking it. There are so many beautiful colors in the world. Uh, <laughs> I keep wanting to say Jeannie. Jenny, that's her name. I gotta remember that. There's so many beautiful colors in the world. Jenny wants me to take a whole rainbow. Take a whole rainbow, make a whole rainbow. Hmm. I suppose this means you let Miss Lestrade keep the smoke grenade launcher you have. I mean, yeah, she pulled it out on us. Yes, that's right. It got boring if it. I, it got boring of it anyways. Wait, what? I, what? <laughs> I got bored of it anyways. Really always reacts the same way when I shoot him with it now. And what kind of reaction is that? Is that get that shit away from me? Poor Hurley. Oh, I can't wait for Ginny to arrive. It's been too long since she last came over. I'm so excited. I just hope she does actually come. I mean, she's a little street urchin, right? She's not gonna turn down a hot meal. She's a smart girl. I'm sure you've been wondering why... why I, Fuck, God damn it! what the hell's wrong with me tonight? I'm sure you've been wondering why, why it is that I live here with Hurley, haven't you? Well, it has crossed my mind. That and... where are your real parents? My mommy and daddy aren't with me anymore. Mommy passed away when I was born. And around the same time, my father... 
Don't tell me he blamed you. Well, he has to go far away land because of one of the cases he and Hurley were working on. Your dad is Watson. Oh. Wait a minute. Did you say he and Hurley? Yes. Daddy and Hurley were always solving mystery cases together. Did Holmes not tell her that her dad's dead? She didn't mention that before. I mean, she's a smart person. I I'm pretty sure she would realize it. He wrote them all up in his diaries. Then, what's in the middle chest over there? Wait, what? I'm, my bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what's in the middle chest over there. Really? He recorded them all? So, you mean it's true? Mr. Shlom's really did have a partner with whom he tackled most of, um, the fuck. <laughs> whom he tackled some of his most taxing cases. Oh yes, I mean, it's always nice to have one, isn't it? So, Mr. Shlom's partner was your father. Exactly. Really told me I wasn't allowed to look in the chest. Oh my god, guys. Buy viewers, followers, and primes on yourfollowswithaz.com. You become big follow streamer guy. You become big popular. Or you can just play Fortnite. <laughs> but it only makes me want to look even more, so I open it up. And found your father's memoirs? Yes. So I asked Hurley, who wrote these? He, hurt, he nearly fell off his chair. But then he told me, that's when I found out that the author of all those accounts, yes, my father. So, how's his father's with Mr. Sloan's partner? I practically lived with Hurley all my life. I was tiny when he took me in. So, it came as quite a shock when Hurley told me he wasn't really my daddy. I mean, wait, what? What? <laughs> what? I'm sorry. Wait a minute. I'm confused now. So, are you telling me that, uh, that like, that, uh, wa I'm assuming her dad is Watson. That Watson said, here's my child, take care of her. I can't live with her, but I'm still your partner, right? It must have, uh, it must have done. Wait, it must have done? What? I'm sorry, that's a weird way. I wonder why Mr. Sloan chose to tell you at such, a, and at such a young age. Really says it's because he wouldn't have been able to hide it from me. Oh. Well, having lived with Hurley all these years, you might say this was his way of, uh, what? <laughs> you might say that, that his way has rubbed up on me. There are some things I can just see. Especially lies. I almost know when people are lying before they open their mouths sometimes. Right. Anyways, I was so fascinated when I read Daddy's Diaries. That's what inspired me to write The Adventures of Herlock Shlomes, actually. I always assume Mr. Shlomes simply told you... <clears throat> Excuse me. I always, <laughs> I always assume Mr. Shlomes simply told you all those thrilling stories. Oh no, Hurley's hopelessly like... Uh, hopelessly. Hopeless like that. He forgets everything. As soon as he solved the case, it's all, it all but vanished from his mind. Oh, I see. The other day, it was so embarrassing... As usual, he totally forgot about the case he just solved. So, the very next day, he gathered together all the people involved and proceeded to solve the case again. It was quite a shock for everyone. You can say that again. You share your father's surname, don't you, Iris? That's right. Wilson. Daddy is Dr. John H. Wilson. I learned from his diaries that he's a doctor of medicine, you see. My bad. I I call them Watson, but it, I mean, it's Watson, let's be honest, but Wilson. Mr. Wilson! That's what prompted me to study and study so that I can earn a doc doctorate as well. There's his father who went to some distant land. And there's a doctor by the name of John H. Wilson. 
The court will now hear the trial of Ryanosuke Narahoto. Kindly state before the court the name of the victim in this case. The victim's name was Dr. John H. Wilson. That's right, visiting professor of medicine at Imperial Yume University. And the man who, in the most bizarre circumstances, lost his life just because we left Japan. Wait, just because- well, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and the man who, in the most bizarre circumstances, lost his life just before we left Japan. Just because my mind is fucked tonight. Mrs. Sato? Yes? Perhaps we shouldn't pursue the conversation any further at this time. I think that would be for the best. Ah, my dear fellows! How good to see you. M Mr. Slums. Whatever do you not, uh, why ever did you not make your presence known to me before? I did, dickhead. <laughs> well, no matter now. So, how the devils are you? We literally just stopped talking to each other for like 10 minutes, Slums. We've been with you for most of the day. <laughs> exactly. Goodness, really? Don't tell me, Mr. Slums. Is your violin unscathed? Hmm? My violin? Whatever are you talking about, dear madam? Oh, uh... Never mind that now. I have something far more interesting to show you. Behold, my dear fellows. Did you make a replica? From memory? Oh, another music box disc. No, not another disc, Mrs. Sada. This is the one Gregson demanded we hand over as evidence. Mr. McGill did this. Oh my. Then, what is it doing here? <laughs> you know, at times, Mr. Narahoto. I think that, though, I have an undeniable turn for a deduction. I may well be ever more adept at larceny. Oh, that would be wonderfully exciting. I'd be your pickpocket assistant. They said, why don't we just steal shit? Yeah, fuck being the good guy. What if I just go fucking full, full uh, chaotic evil in this bitch? Start stealing from everybody I see. I stole your pocket right now. Yeah, your whole entire pocket. Not your pocketbook. I went for the pocket. <laughs> Aruno could be our go-to lawyer if we ever got caught. Fuck you guys. Right, yeah. Plus, since he has such beautiful handwriting, she could write all our menacing crime notifications. Yes, I'd be delighted. You guys are fucked up. I'm just gonna pretend this conversation never happened, I think. Alright, well, what do you got for me, Shlums? Magnus McGilded. Not a name I expected to hear again soon. Yes, it's only been two months since that grisly case. Mr. McGill had perished within hours of the trial's conclusion. Was it the curse of the Reaper? No one knows, still now. The omnibus was reduced to a pile of ash, not a shred of evidence remains. And with the man's death, the truth about the murder in which he was so intimately involved was buried. Even though we successfully established Mr. McGilded's innocent in that innocence in that trial, even though he obviously isn't innocent and he fucking stabbed that dude, <laughs> the newspapers are still claiming that it remains an unsolved case. The murder of the brickmaker, Mr. Thrice Fired, Mason. In the end, the truth of the matter remains a mystery. We still have no idea what really happened that night. That man has no neck. <laughs> and although Mr. McGilda was found not guilty through my defense, I still don't know if it was the right judgment or not. 
That man is super evil. It would appear the case is not yet closed. I mean, that's what unsolved means. I kind of gathered that, Shlums. I don't understand. How did the disc come to come to be in your possession? I thought Inspector Gregson took it back to Scotland Yard. Quite correct. And that sort of uncompromising attitude is precisely why I always carry something like this. Caramel? That's a bar of caramel, or caramel, if you want to say it like that. Caramel, caramel, caramel. <laughs> Mr. Slums. Uh, your one and only friend in times of loneliness, if I'm not mistaken. If you will humor me, my dear fellows. Cast your mind back to when the good detective confiscated the disc. I'll be taking that whatever it is of McGilded down to the yard. Thank you very much. So hand it over. Oh, yes, of course. If the police demand something as evidence, my dear fellows, we have no choice but to copulate. Copulate, copulate, copulate. It all, it's all yours, Inspector. Oh, Inspector, here you go. Anything for you, Inspector. For the briefest of moments, I had the disc in my hand, did I not? Yes, yes you did. But I still don't understand. It was precisely at that moment that I summoned my one and only friend into action. I present... I pre... what? <laughs> I pressed the disc into a pair of bars just like that. Wait, what? I thought the disc was bigger than what it than what it looked like, honestly. I thought it was like... Alright. I didn't think it was that small. I thought it was way bigger. Because that machine is a big-ass machine, but okay. That's amazing. The disc is all the... Uh, is all... It's all the minuscule protrusions... Wow. The disc and all the minuscule protrusions have made it an Im image in the caramel. Indeed. This caramel is quite exceptional. I developed it myself for... Um, I'm gonna take a drink of my water now. I can't speak! <laughs> there we go. Indeed, this caramel is quite exceptional. I developed it myself, you know. Suitably soft for making impressions. Suitably? Yeah, suitably. Yeah. Soft for making impressions, but resistant to melting. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. Resistant to melting, but it's constantly soft. Wouldn't it get just sticky everywhere? The result of precisely controlled solution. How extraordinary. Carrying a pair of these on one's person frequently proves very useful indeed. Take a house key, for example. A simple press, and its unique form is duplicated. Yeah, but you're not gonna stick j You're one of those asshole schlums, aren't you? You're the, you're the asshole who would put peanut butter in the fucking coin slot at the arcade. I can enter anyone's property at will. And will- <laughs> And never without high- High- uh, High shrouds- Shrouds? What the fuck is that word? Sucrose? Sucro Sucrose. I'm, I'm sorry. I barely see that word. Hmm. Plot convenient caramel, exactly. And there without high sucrose nourishment. Yes. It sounds illegal. From the image, I was able to create this. I confess, I was most curious to know what manner of music would ensue from a disc when played. Okay, well then what we got? People put peanut butter in coin slots? Oh yeah, fucking, uh... Back in the ghetto days, where arcades were more frequent, there were assholes who would, like... You know the type of people who, like, in public bathrooms would just shit on the walls or something like that and just leave it because they're fucking nasty and they're just vagrants and a fucking menace to society? Like, those type of people, they would just be like, <laughs> I'm gonna put peanut butter in the coin slots and fuck it up for everyone because it's funny. Right? Just for no reason. Just for being destructive. Like, people are assholes for no reason. It's female assholes for no reason. It's fucking, uh, at my job or whatever for the past couple of months, there's the same fucking group of kids. Well, I don't even know if it's a group of kids anymore. Because it might just be the one kid. Because you see this motherfucker on the cameras all the time. But the same motherfucker keeps pulling the goddamn fire alarm. 
And since, you know, we're not allowed to tackle his ass and beat him up, fucking the most we can do is just, like, get there before he gets there. But I'm talking about that dude would, like, stake out the place until, like, 11 o'clock at night to pull the fucking fire alarm. We caught him red-handed multiple times. He dropped his watch. He took his watch. The watch is ours now. <laughs> so he gave me back my watch. Like, yeah, come and get it. Come get it. Come on, take the watch. It's right here. I'm giving it to you. You want it? Take it. <laughs> come on. What are you scared of? There's so many times where, like, the kid has fucked up and we can completely just tackle his ass right there. But it's like, we can't do that, so. You know. Put peanut butter on the fire alarm. Problem solved. Yeah, if I, I don't know. People are fucking destructive for no reason. People have... Honestly, people have no lives. Like, truly no lives. Well, unfortunately, I have no idea. No idea. None whatsoever. Are you familiar with the workings of a music box, my dear fellow? No, I'm afraid not. Goodness, you don't know, Runo? How the fuck am I supposed to know that, Iris? Inside a music box, there's a special metal piece called a comb. Ah, oh, very special. <laughs> That's what produces the sound. Small protrusions pluck the different teeth of the comb as it rotates past and makes it, it makes different notes. The first music box to be invented used a rotating cylinder with protrusions on it. Yeah, I remember. I think, um, if you ever played 999, or it's either 999, one of the Zero Escape games, I think they had, uh, they had, like, a music box that worked like that, that you can, you know, solve some puzzles with. But over time, a new type of player was produced, which used disc, such as these. With the development, the popularity of music boxes spread far and wide. Each Pokemon to understand the power that's inside. <laughs> All around the globe. Why? Uh, why exactly? Because the discs are easy to produce and can be interchanged to facilitate interchange. Yeah, I said that right. Interchange to facilitate the playing of different tunes. There's a great many firms in Europe now manufacturing music boxes. As a result. It is wonderful to be able to enjoy music, even when no performer is present. But it's the very success of that invention that means we are now present in it with an insurmountable problem. What do you mean? Whatever do you mean, Shlomes? As you can imagine, the construction of one's firm Wow. The construction of one firm's music box does not match that of others. And we have not a way of knowing in which music box this particular disc was designed to be played. This is no resolution to the problem, I'm afraid. It's quite in intractable. Intractable? Interactable. Hmm. Intractable. Oh, I see. That's why. Naturally, I test the disc in these few music boxes I have at my disposal. Yeah, that one's not good. But as you can hear, to no avail. The results were equally unsatisfactory in this one. So, I am pressingly engaged in acquiring an example of the music box ever- wait, what? I am engaged in acquiring an example of all the music boxes- Okay. I would say an example. I feel like example is not the right word to use there, but it is. It makes sense. It just doesn't sound right. <laughs> Acquired an example of all the music boxes ever made in Europe. Every single one? That's early for you. Always taking things too far. But my dear girl, an unsolved riddle is quite unpungent to unpungent? Yeah, unpungent to my constitution. But surely all the different types in Europe will amount to a huge volume of music boxes, won't it? Hmm, yes, and that is certainly true. In the worst case, you just pawn them all off. I should just have to ask to vacate vacate the attic room. Fuck you! That's my place! What? 
You kick me out? Iris, do something. Well, it's time I start getting things ready for dinner, I think. Jenny will be here before long. Thank you, Iris. Oh. Wait, are we just gonna let that hang out? He said he's gonna kick us out. <laughs> Sasato, I'm poor, I can't live anywhere else. Oh well, you must let me help you then. Of course, Susie. There's plenty to do. I think I shall investigate the conditions of my faithful performing partner. Now then, where did I leave it? Let this be a lesson to you, Shlomes. Never leave anything too precious with the pawnbroker. Hmm, yes. Maybe right. Oh, that reminds me of something Mr. Winniebake said before. He said that he had a manuscript of irises in pawn, didn't he? Did he? Listen. Listen, Sasato. Mikotoba. I like saying Mikotoba, it's a fun name. Mikotoba. He said, let it. Li Just like how you don't want to tell me about the telegram, he don't want to tell you about the fucking manuscripts. So, just. Shut up. Yes, he definitely mentioned it. Mr. Sloan's latest tale of un otherworldly mystery lies dormant in my storerooms. Where were his words, I believe? So you heard about that, did you? I expect you were as ins incensed. Incensed. Yeah, sure. Incensed as I was. And yes, the idea of such a wonderful story languishing in Mr. Windybank's storeroom, gathering dust. My dear madam, I'm quite sure I told you already. The pawnbroker storeroom is the safest place for it. More secure than a bank's vault. And what about you? And what about your? I still can't say that fucking name. Stradiv Stradivarius, whatever the fuck. <laughs> what about your violin, Hurley? Was that safe and secure? Well, there may be the occasional mix-up, caused by a certain impromptu with someone not too far from me now. Do you have any idea how long it took me to write that Bakersville story, Hurley? Not Bakersville. My bad, Baskerville. Oh, it sounds so excited. The Hound of Baskervilles. Of the Baskervilles. I should love to read it. What? What happened? Please tell me the Hound of the Baskervilles is like a fucking uh, Jack the Ripper type thing. I would really love it. Huh? Hello? What's going on here? How does it feel like an icy chill just swept through the room? Susie? What did you say? I would like to read it. Um... You said, The Hound of the Baskervilles. Wait a minute. Susie? My bad, now I'm calling her Susie. Mikotoba? I don't think we ever said the name of the story. What did you do? Mikotoba? Mikotoba, what did you do? How could you know the full title? Well, that's... Uh-huh. Mikotoba. That's because Mr. Sato is such a great fan of all the stories about Mr. Slums, of course. But Runo, The Hound of the Baskervilles, has never been published. What? When I showed Hurley the manuscripts, he told me that I wasn't allowed to publish it yet. I don't understand. Is that what was on the telegram? That's why he said that he kept it safe. Until it was the right time for the story to be made public, you see. So, that's why the manuscript is in Wendy Banks. And yet, how does Susie know about the title? Well, Hurley? What's going on? What did you guys do? Uh huh. What is it, Mr. Slums? It would appear our guest has arrived. Saved by the bell, Jesus. Miss Lestrade, how long have you been there? This was a bad idea. I knew I wasn't welcomed. I'm going. 
No, wait, Miss Lestrade. We've all been eagerly awaiting your arrival. Haven't we, Iris? <laughs> Gina is me. Just walk in, she's all like, everyone's quiet. You know, the party stopped when I walked in, everyone got quiet. Guess I'm not invited here. Oh, yes. Just wait there, Jenny. <laughs> wait there, Jenny. We have everything ready in a jiffy. Come along, Susie. Right, of course. What the fuck just happened? It's a pleasure to see you here, Miss Lestrade. Please make yourself at home. Don't stand in the doorway, my dear girl. Come along in. What says you to some met? I cannot say that for the life of me. Metalus, Metalusalon, Metalusalon. Some type of fancy pantsy music name. Won't take no for an answer. Uh, well, I guess whatever. The fuck, metal slum, <laughs> metal slum, <laughs> metal slum. It is then. Hey, the cat's joining us. Hey, kitty cat. That evening, Iris prepared us all a meal that was even more delicious than usual. Mr. Sloan's violin performance was in no way meddlesome. And Gina, as we came to call her, taught us all how to steal things from uh, one another without being noticed. So she's just whispering in everyone's ear. She's all like, see that, see that shit that is pie right now? Hey, Susato, you can you just snatch that shit right now. I bet you can do it. Just, just do it. Everyone thoroughly enjoyed themselves well into the night. Just steal it. Just steal it. Don't don't even think about it. Just take it. You don't know what it is, but you want it because it's not yours. <laughs> but you're, you're going to make it yours one way or another. That was a very enjoyable evening, wasn't it? Oh, yes. I was cooking was truly divine. And I feel as though I can still hear the enchanting strings of Mr. Schlum's violin, even now. Best of all, I bet I could steal the glasses of his lordship's face next time we're in court. I, I recommend that you don't do that. Naruhoto-san, could I consult with you about something, I wonder? Is it a confession of love? I will accept, wholeheartedly. What's the matter, Susato? It's about the telegram I received. Oh. The one that arrived first thing in the morning, I suppose. I've... I've been summoned. You're leaving me?! <laughs> no! What? Summoned? What do you mean? The telegram was for Lord Chief Justice Office. Lord Strongheart has asked to see me. Oh, I thought you meant like you've been summoned back to Japan. I'm like, oh, no. The Lord Chief Justice? When? Tomorrow morning. What? Then, then we have to start preparing at once. Oh, no, that, that won't be necessary, Narahura. I've been summoned alone. All right, listen. I get his name is Lord Chief Justice, Mikotaba, but I'm just saying... Put a knife in your boot, just in case, just in case. You know, just do something <laughs> alone. What on earth for? I have no idea. I suppose I'll find out tomorrow. What's this all about? Whatever it is, it's making me feel very uneasy. Oh, look at that be, I wonder. Is it Shlom's? Oh no, it's Iris. Good evening, friends. Oh, Iris, hello again. Oh, let's try. Iris? Iris? Did you tell Gina she's just sleeping with us tonight? And Gina too. Yes, Ginny's gonna stay with us tonight. She's gonna sleep in with me. Oh, well then, yeah, sure. Isn't that right, Genie? Well, yeah. 
How lovely. Let us make a pot of tea. You know, I've learned so much today. Oh? What? Partic what in particular? All those things Genie showed us? Wasn't it wonderful? Oh, you mean all those pickpocketing techniques? We have had fun trying them out on each other, didn't we? I think I've awakened a natural talent. I could earn a living from it. You might be getting ahead of yourself a little there. So, what brings you up to your humble what brings us uh, blah, 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 blah. So, what brings you up to our humble quarters at this late hour? Well, you see. I came to return to I fucking knew it. I knew it. I didn't want to say it because I was like, nah, there's no way someone would swipe my armband right off of me. Hmm. I knew it. I felt it in my heart. I'm like, someone stole something from me. Wait, what? That's mine. Oh my. However did you... I told you, didn't I? I have a natural talent for it. Oh yes, I forgot. Iris literally is a child genius. So anyways, here. You can have it back. Not that I really understand why you wear it, though. Oh, thank you. It's only the spirit of my dead friend. Alright then, good night. Yes, good night. Hmm. So this is your office, is it? Stop looking at- stop casing the place! Get the- get the fuck out, Iris. What do you think, Genie? I think I wouldn't fancy my chances with a lawyer, um, uh, with a lawyer what live- wait, what? I don't think I would fancy my chances with a lawyer what lives in a place like this. Yes, me too. Oh. Oh, you're saying I'm not a good enough lawyer for you. Oh, okay. Even though you can't afford one. Alright. It seems as though Iris here still has something she'd like to talk about. Nikodoba? I suppose she probably wants to talk about the manuscript. Yes, I suppose she probably does. Alright. Nikodoba, start explaining. Iris, I... I suppose you're hoping to talk about the manuscript, aren't you? Aren't you gonna tell me? I'm so sorry. I need a little more time, please. Was that in the telegram, probably? Hmm. All right, I understand. I hope I haven't made you feel awkward. Oh no, not at all, Iris. Oh, thanks for the fe- uh, I was about to say thanks for the fellow, Jesus. Thanks for the follow! <laughs> uh, how do I pronounce your name? Electroflow? Electroflow. Thank you. It's greatly appreciated. I don't know what this is all about, really, but... It's a story you made up, is it, Iris? The manuscript, or whatever you call it? It's not exactly a story that I made up. It's something I read in Daddy's diaries. Daddy's? Yes, me papa. That's right. I don't suppose I mentioned it to you before, Jeannie. But... My daddy wasn't Hurley... Uh, my dad... Fuck. My daddy was Hurley's assistant once. His partner. Huh? They solved all sorts of strange and mysterious cases together. Like the case of the mysterious clapping ass cheeks. <laughs> Booty so fine, but so loud. <laughs> Is that right, mister? Apparently so. I was surprised as you are, though. And daddy wrote all those details in every single case down. Wait, what? I, what? <laughs> I had a stroke or you not. And daddy wrote all the details of every single case down. You see, in his diaries. So I study them and write my stories based on what actually happened. So, where's your old man now then? He had to go away on urgent business to a faraway land. He'll be gone for a very long time. So, 
I never really met him. Oof. Oh, right. Come to think of it. I don't know anything about Gina's parents either. Perhaps we should ask her. Perhaps we fucking shouldn't! Like, read the room! Iris, this Hound of Baskerville story. I take it's another tale of inspiration- of what? Wow. I take it's another tale inspired by your father's accounts? That's right. I thought it was fascinating. But it's different somehow. From the other cases, I mean. Oh, how? I don't really know. But it must be special in some way. Because after I've written it, and I showed the manuscript to Hurley, he turned as white as a sheet. It was the first time I've ever seen him like that. It pains me to have to say this after you toiled over it for so long, Iris. But this story must not be published at this time, under any circumstances. But why not? It's one of my best works! I'm not at liberty to say. Not now. So please, don't ask me. Alright then. I won't. But I do solemnly swear that I will explain everything one day, Iris. When the time is right. And that's how the manuscript came to be with Mr. Winniebanks, isn't it? Yes. Hurley said it had to be somewhere very safe. That really gets my goat, that does. He's treating you like a child. She is a child. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is, keeping secrets like that. I'm sure Mr. Sloan's isn't trying to be mean. Eh? He said he wasn't at liberty to talk about it. I'm sure there must have been a very good reason. I think so, too. You lot are too trusting for your own good. But, I can't... But, he can't pull the wool over my eyes. Shlums is lying to Iris. I bet my life on it. What? Hurley's lying to me? Come on, Gina, what are you doing? Cut that shit out. Is Gina in the room with us? Okay, there we go. What the hell, Gina? I'm not gonna open up with her parents, that's kinda... <laughs> that's kinda fucked up. Gina, what do you mean when you say you know Mr. Slums is lying? Well... Well, he reckon he popped the manuscript or whatever it is, right? But come on, it's obviously a little rubbish. Oh my, why would you think that, Gina? It's simple. If the story was really an old Winnie Bank storeroom, there's no way someone from half halfway around the world, in other in other words, you, could have known about it. Uh. Sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, he sold it. Whatever it's still. Uh, what, without telling you. God damn it, Gina, your accent is fucking me up. But Hurley would never do something like that. I'm sure of it. <laughs> Grown-ups do a lot worse than that, believe me. Bare-faced liars, a lot of them. You just ain't realized it yet. I'm telling you, that manuscript ain't at Windy Banks soon see if you had a look. Even if you think you can trust him, I don't. That Shlums is a liar like the rest of them. I mean, he did help you fucking... <laughs> he did help you in your time of need. If I'm honest, I have wondered if Hurley's telling me the truth sometimes. See? Oh, but I don't mean that I think he sold it. I mean that I sometimes wonder if he might have hidden my manuscript somewhere. Somewhere I don't know. Even though it's wrong of me to doubt him. Don't be too hard on yourself, Iris.
and just out of nowhere, like, Hey, Gio, what happened to your mom and pops? I realize that I don't know anything about your parents, Gina. I ain't got any, have I? Never did, never have. Oh. Look, the East End's full of orphans like me. No one wants nothing to do with us from the minute we're born. Not even our moms. But we all stick together. The older ones look after the little ones and make sure they get by. So that's why you're a pickpocket? Nah, Davin's my life. I love it. I just love stealing shit. <laughs> oh, so you're doing it for your family? No, no, I can get a job for that, like, easily. I just love stealing shit. I get a kick at it every time I lift some pompous idiot's purse. And that's how we all afford to eat. I'm like Robin Hood, ain't I? <laughs> that's how I see it. Oh, Gina. I do think about it sometimes. What it'd be like having parents, I mean. I always thought it'd make everything right. But, I haven't listened to what Irish just said. It sounds like having parents ain't always easy either. Oh? I mean, if you know you've never had them, I mean, wait, what? If you know you've never had them, you don't feel like you're always wanting to meet them. Yeah, I get it. It's true. I don't want to see daddy so much. Wait, what? My bad. Did I read that? I definitely read that wrong, right? I do want to see daddy so much. Okay. Oh, Iris. Oh my goodness. Look at the time. Come along, Jeannie. We should go back downstairs. Yeah, alright. And please, don't mention any of this to Hurley, will you? No, of course not. Good night then, Iris. Good night, Genie. <laughs> I mix Gina and Jenny. Jesus. You must let me make breakfast for you tomorrow morning. I insist. Oh, yes please. Are you even gonna have time to do that tomorrow morning? Don't you gotta see Mr. Strongheart? Good night then. Iris. It sure is easy to forget, isn't it? Sometimes she speaks just like an adult. But deep down, she's still just a child. Well, I think it's time that I turned in for the night too, Narahodo. Dr. John H. Wilson. Iris' father. But also... The name of the murdered vis name of the murdered visiting professor at UMA University. Can't be a mere coincidence. There's something deeper going on. What gave it away? Was it the fact that we just let the culprit go? <laughs> I'm not getting over that shit. Ah, uh, we're just gonna chalk up murder to a to a fucking misdemeanor. Like what? Stir not a huda. Mr. Narahodo, wake up. That voice. That's Mr. Slums. Oh, shit. In the middle of the night. What's going on? It's the middle of the night, man. It's Miss Lestrade. She's gone. She stole the disc. <sighs> Damn it. Gina? She was supposed to be sleeping in Iris' room, but her bed is empty. Well, she's an independent young woman. She probably decided to go home, no? I think not. From speaking to her before she retired, I received the distant impression that she was looking forward to breakfast with Mrs. Sato. No, I don't believe that girl has gone home. Uh, but I've been waiting for over an hour now. Over an hour? Oh. If you'll indulge me, look out of the window, my dear fellow. 
What's that about? Wait a minute. Why is there a light on at this time of night? That's Mr. Winniebanks Pawnbrokery. Mr. Winniebanks? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> it's simple. If the story was really in old Winniebanks storeroom, there's no way so one half around the world, in other words, you, can know about it. Sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, you sold it. Without telling you. She's gonna look at the manuscript? Jesus. Could you not have gone? It seems you have some knowledge of the situation, Mr. Naruto. Sorry. <laughs> no. No, not really. Well, anyways, we must investigate. At once. Mr. Sato. Are you not going to explain why you're awake? <laughs> she just runs in the room with us like, I'm up too. Like, okay. Door to Wendy Banks. It's open. And the lamp is burning. It must be Gina, mustn't it? My god, we're gonna walk in there and someone's gonna be lying dead on the floor. Let's hope it's nothing more sinister. Like, Mr. Sinister. One of the villains from Deadpool. <laughs> I think that's his name, right? He's like a vampire or some shit? Come, there's not a moment to lose. Clearly something is afoot inside. There's no one here. Oh, yes. There is. Oh! Mr. Slums! What the? Has Slums been shot? Leave me, Mr. Narahoto. What? After them. Go! Right. Blast. Blast, really? That's the word I use? Blast it all! <laughs> I've lost them. Hello? Hello, what do we have here? Is that Gregson? Oh no, it's just a Bucky. The alarm was just raised from the pawnbroker, sir. Would you know something about this? Officer, come with me! It's my friend, Mr. Slums. He's been shot! Shot? With the policeman close behind me, I ran back to Windy Banks. Mr. Jones! Mr. Narado! How bad is it? Uh, never mind me, but there's much at stake. Behind that door. In the storeroom. Uh, hurry! Damn it, girl, why couldn't you just sit down <laughs> to spend the night? You gotta start being curious and shit. All right. Seems like we're getting somewhere now. Bang. I'll be all right, Mr. Narahuda. After them, go. Behind that door, in the storeroom. Hurry! Aw, oh, they put the gun in her hand! <laughs> no! <laughs> Come on!
From that moment, Winnie Bank's pawn brokery became a crime scene. Everything that followed happened in a whirlwind of activity. The arrival of the police, the preliminary investigation of the scene, and the questioning. It was just before dawn, before I was allowed to back into my lodgings at two at at two twenty one B. For some reason I couldn't say it. <laughs> oh, someone's making some tea. Hi, Iris. Oh, Iris. A telegram came, but all it said was, wait at home. I guess that's meant for Mikotoba. Oh, yes. We asked one of the policemen to have it sent. It was simple. It was simply impossible to come back. When I woke up, I was all alone. Curly and Jeannie were gone. Everyone was gone. What happened, Reno? Poor Iris. She's trembling. She's obviously trying very hard not to let herself get too worried. I'll explain everything that I know. Something awful has happened, hasn't it? Yes, I'm afraid so. Aw, oh, damn it. <laughs> now I gotta tell her that... That the people out here are getting shot and killed. It's too much. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Iris, but Mr. Wendy Banks is dead. He was shot. We discovered it in the early hours of the morning. Oh, yes. I had a feeling. You did? Well, I saw all those police carriages pulling up outside a shop. So I knew something must have happened there. When we entered Wendy Banks in the small hours, we disturbed a gang of two thugs. They ran out onto the streets, and I chased after them, but they got away. So, it was one of them who shot Mr. Wendy Banks, I suppose? I don't know, but that's not what the police believe at the moment. Oh, why not? They've arrested someone else as their prime suspect, you see? Gina. Genie? But why? Well, the thing is... No. Genie wouldn't do something like that. I know, I know. None of us think she did. Then why have they arrested her? I'm sorry. There was nothing I could do. Yeah, let's talk about the arrest. Why not? <laughs> I don't understand why they arrest Genie. It's not fair. What about the two thugs that were at the scene? Weren't they the prime suspects? After all, they shot Hurley dead, didn't they? Whoa. No, I mean, Mr. Slums isn't dead, Iris. Uh, this is also horrible. The thing is, Mr. Winniebanks was found on the floor in the storeroom where he kept all the deposits, uh, deposits. I keep saying it like that. Depositive articles. And the storeroom door was locked from the inside. I see. But he wasn't alone in there. Gina was found next to him on the floor as well. Oh no. And according to the detectives who investigated afterwards. Don't tell me. They're the one- They're- Fuck. <laughs> there was no one else in the room? I couldn't speak for a moment. Yes, exactly. How did you know? It's the only explanation. Yes. The only explanation, indeed. What do you mean by that, Runo? Well, uh, <laughs> what can I say? I'm damned if I agree, I'm damned if I don't. Let's talk about slums. So, where's Hurley, then? Is he still there investigating the scene? He really ought to have had some breakfast. It's not good for him to miss meals. I don't want to worry you, Iris. But I have some news about Mr. Slums. Huh? He was taken to the hospital this morning. What? Well, ahem. When we entered Wendy Banks, a gun was fired, and he took a bullet. Hurley? Was shot? 
Listen, Iris, I get you're in a moment of, of shock. But is that really that hard to believe? You know how many cases this guy's worked on? At some point, he's gonna get shot. <laughs> no. No. It's alright. His life isn't in danger. Really? Are you sure? Where is he? Which hospital? He's... He's at St. 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 Snyder? Siner? How the fuck you say that? Siner? Siner. They're tending to him there. I must see him. At once. I'm sorry, Iris, but you can't. And why not? That's not fair. I'm family, remember? I should be allowed. No, I, I mean, nobody can see him at the moment. He's not allowed any visitors. They're preparing to operate, you see? To... to operate? Oh, poor Hurley. And your slums! It was the two thugs who were in the who was in when uh, <laughs> it was two thugs who were in Mr. Wendy Bank's shop. They shot Mr. Sloan's when we disturbed him. You see, it was pitch black inside the shop at all times. Wait, what? At at at, mm. at that time, at the time, I can't read. I should shoot myself. <laughs> My mind went totally blank. I'm afraid I just froze. After them. Go! After them, Narahodo, so you can get shot too. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Stop both of them and be like, I got you now. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Shlums. You think he did that to be like, go after the crime, get after the criminals, right? Don't let them escape. But what he actually was thinking was, bitch, I'm taking you down with me. <laughs> go get shot, you idiot. After that, I ran onto the streets, but. Well, they were long gone. I should have hesitated. I'm so sorry. It's my fault. I let them get away. I think... That's a very good thing. I'm sorry? Well, if you'd seen which way they went and chased after them... You might have been shot as well. <laughs> yeah, I love how he's not even thinking about it either. He's like, wait... <gasps> On top of everything else, I couldn't bear that. Oh, Iris. Alright. What about Mikotoba? I guess you went to go see Lockhart? Where's Susie, Reno? She's still at the police station. Oh, why? I expect she's still being questioned. The police said that they wouldn't be finished for a while. Why aren't you there, then? Well, I didn't get a good look at the criminals anyways, so they weren't questioning me for long. And Mr. Sato stayed behind at the scene to tend to Mr. Sloan's, so they didn't get started until later. Oh, I see. Besides, one of us had to come back with Iris. Come back to be with Iris. I can't read. I'm glad Inspector Gregson agreed to leave me uh, to me leaving early. You should have you should have let me know. I would have come to the station. I'm afraid I need to go out again now, Iris. There's not much I can do at the moment. But I can at least try and find out how Mr. Slums and Gina are getting on. I want to go too. Take me with you. I can't stand... I can't... I can't read. <laughs> I can't just stand here... Fuck! <laughs> I can't stand just sitting around waiting. Jesus. I'm not sure how I feel about taking a 10-year-old child to the crime... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Fucking Rinosuke. Rinosuke, whatever fuck your name is. Because your ancestor apparently takes a fucking eight-year-old around with them, so... <laughs> Doesn't matter. Wasn't she like six in the first game? <laughs> Blooper real time. <laughs> yeah, I can't read for shit. But I don't want to leave her all alone here either. Alright then, Iris. Perhaps you can help me. Oh yes, I love to. Gina's at prison. Mr. Slums is probably in his hospital bed. And don't forget, uh, and don't forget, we have to visit the crime scene. We need to uh, that bet, <laughs> We need to conduct a thorough investigation. Oh, I see you're ready for action. I imagine Iris would appreciate going to the hospital sooner rather than later. 
Alright, sure. Let's head to the hospital then. New locations have been added. Let's go, Iris. Let's walk around the block and see who we meet up and down our street. So let's walk around the block. We'll meet people with happy feet. I'm pretty sure that's not even the lyrics. It's been years. I don't remember. <laughs> 16th of April. Hurley! Oh. He's not here. No, that's strange. The nurse definitely said he was in the bed by the window, didn't she? Oh, I know it's what probably happened. Hurley was being a big baby, and the bullet wound wasn't that bad after all, so he had been sent home. For some reason, I feel like Sherlock is the guy who got up out of bed, jumped out the window, and said, I must investigate the crime scene as, like, blood's dripping from his arm, like an idiot. I'm not so sure about that. Maybe you're not. There's no question that it was a fairly serious injury that Holmes su suffered. Oh. Hello, hello, what do we have here? This ward is off limits. No visiting. So what are you doing here, eh? Listen, if you're supposed to be guarding the place, then why did you leave? Well, I have you know. We're Hurley's next of kin. Eh? Oh. Well, begging your pardon then, ma'am. Sir. A little lady and a curious eastern gentleman. The great mystery solver has a f uh, has a family, eh? That's how you see us? Mm, sure. Where is he, constable? Where's Hurley? I believe he's currently in operation in the operation theater. Operation theater, ma'am. Undergoing an extensive operation. No, he went to the operation theater to watch theater. Not not to take an operation. Thanks for explaining to me. Intensive. It has been several hours since he went in. Oh dear. Is he gonna be alright? Well, it does appear to be working, you see. And <laughs> it's intensive, alright, you know? It's good what is this, the eighteen hundreds or some shit? So that means that they're they're like, we gotta get the bullet out. He's like, no, it's fine, leave it in. They're like, nope, here, drink this fucking whiskey. Time to just dig in the wound and take it out. The anesthetics, that is. And by anesthetics, I mean a ball of fucking Jack Daniels. Oh. <laughs> I heard a report that the gentleman claims uh, he may have had a little too much to drink last night. Coffee, that is. What? Wait. <laughs> so he's like, I drunk too much coffee last night. They're trying to make me drunk to put me to sleep, but that's not working because <laughs> coffee's fucking it up. Anyways, I think it would be fair to assume that he won't be back for several hours. I see. Thank you, Constable. Think an old anesthetic would be a bat? <laughs> Just take it to his temple? That would kill the man. He's like, alright, listen. <laughs> Fuck it, just take the back to... He's like, alright, we're gonna knock you out with this. He's gonna be like, wait, am I not supposed to go to sleep when I'm concussed? Eh, nah, it doesn't matter. Chances are you'll be 50-50. You might be alive after this, you might not be. But doctor, I only came in to get a bandage for a paper cut. Ah, it doesn't matter, we gotta put you under. <laughs> oh, poor Hurley. Alright, well, I guess, uh, Mikotoba can handle herself. We should go see Gina. The drink part makes more sense. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's what they did in, like, World War II, right? They're like, dude, we gotta fucking, I don't know, we gotta amputate or some shit. So, here you go. Keep drinking. Don't stop. It's gonna hurt like a bitch. <laughs> Hi, Gina. Hello. They let you keep that? What the fuck? Oh, you still have the grenade launcher Hurley and I made. I wish you wouldn't point it at me all the time, though. 
What are you here for? What the hell you think I'm here for? Genie. I have a feeling it became. Uh, I, be, uh, blah, 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 blah. I have a feeling it because of it was because of us that you ended up in trouble. So we were thinking that we might be able to help you. Well, you can't. Sorry. You heard. Get lost. Don't be like that, Genie. I know you didn't do it. You never shot someone. You would never shoot someone, except for me. Except for everyone in the fucking courtroom. <laughs> you never shoot someone. I just know you wouldn't. You think you know me? Pull the other one. Oh. You ain't got the first idea about the likes of me. I'm a thief. I pinch people's purses when they're walking down the street. That's how I get by. And if I saw my chances, I sneak to a pawn shop any day of the week. Yeah, but that's all you are, a thief. You're not a murderer. Just to see what I lay my hands on. Get it? That's the kind of person I am. But, Jenny. I'll be in court tomorrow, they say. Some cove came by before and said he'd be my lawyer for me. Or like, wait, what? Said he'd be lawyer. He'd be a lawyer for me, or the like. Said it was my right or something. But I told them to stuff it. I don't need no lawyer. I don't need one. What the fuck is wrong with you? If I can reach my hands through a bar right now, I'll fucking smack you in the back of the head, you idiot. She couldn't be staring at me anymore, obviously, if she tried. Why are you being like this, Genie? That was a long time for that prompt to come up. Jesus. <laughs> Legal representation. I don't understand, Gina. Why did you send the public defender away? You wanted me to sign some papers. Representation papers or something like that. It's got uh, it's to be rigged anyways, the whole trial. Depending on me, because I'm a kid. That's what grown-ups always do. Why do you think that? Because that's how it's always been for me. Growing up in the back slums in my whole life. Gro wait, I'm sorry. Growing up in the black slums. And there. In the black slums, yep. In the back slums. I can't. Fuck, oh, damn it. <laughs> my whole life. If you did what the grown ups tell you, if you get your mates dragged off. But wait, what? If you did what the grown ups tell you, it get your mates dragged off by the coppers or worse. I had it happen to me before, and all. Being sold out and nearly. Nearly snu snuffled? Snaffled? Snaffled? That's weird. <laughs> you can't trust no one. That's the point. As soon as you do, you're gone, you're gone to grass. Dead. Gina, listen. If you like, in tomorrow's trial, I could forget it. Genie. Don't you trust Runo? Nah, I don't. Oh, you seem to trust me when you were trying to steal some shit, though. Look, I'll act nicely now. Just leave me alone. Come on, Gina. Let me defend you. Will you tell us what happened then? Last night at the pawnbrokers? There's nothing to tell. I figured it. I figured it paid me, so I broke into the place and started going through the storeroom. But the old bloke walked in on me, and you know the rest. But why, Gina? Why would you do that? Ain't it obvious? The place is full of stuff I could sell for shiny or two. My bad, shiny shilling. <laughs> Damn it, ain't easy, you know. It's a lot of work, and half the time you don't even get nothing. Is that really why you broke into the place? What? Are you sure the true reason wasn't something else? Oh, give it a rest! What'd be the point anyways, huh? Nothing I could say would be... would make a blind bit of difference. Please tell us, Genie. We believe in you. Whatever it is. Believe me? Don't be daft. You can't believe nothing. Everyone lies all the time. And you know what? 
When it comes to liars, I'm the biggest of the lot. I've told some unforgivable lies I have. What do you mean by that? What unforgivable lies? Probably what she's talking about when she was with Mr. McGill, did- What do you mean before, Gina? When you said you're the biggest liars of the lot. Why don't you tell us what these unforgivable lives you told are? Maybe we can help. Sorry. We're out of time. They're gonna want to question me now. Genie, please. Oh yeah. I wanted to give you this. Something to remember me by. A cat? A photographic print of a really adorable cat. I found it in one of the old I found it in one of the old pockets of this coat. Ain't no point in having it. I wonder what a little photograph like this was doing in a pocket of the overcoat. Didn't, what? <laughs> didn't, uh, didn't she say that Mr. Winniebake searched the coat? That man sucks at his job, huh? Anyways, don't bother coming again. Bye. Oh, Genie. The white cat. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Look on the back of this print here. There's something written on it. 13th of February, 9 p.m. Article deposit. Uh, de I keep saying deposit. Jesus. Deposited one small box. Loan amount 10 shillings. Redemption deadline 13th of April. So, this photographic print is a redemption ticket. 15th of, uh, 15th of February. That could be significant. It was just two days before the murder of the omnibus, wasn't it? A small box. That doesn't tell us much about it. Bruno? If Mr. McGill had still had a ticket, then presumably he never redeemed the article. So do you think the box might still be present somewhere? Yes. If it's something McGill had deposited, we need to investigate. Thank you, Gina. Well, good luck in prison. <laughs> Nothing else for me to say there. Uh, where is... Hmm. Oh, I was hoping we can go to the police station, but I guess not. Alright, well then we'll head to, uh... I guess we'll head to Baker Street first. I don't think they would just let us walk inside the pawnbrokery, would they? Alright, doesn't seem like anything interesting out here, so I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna waltz on by! <laughs> just walk on in, unannounced. 16th of April, Winnie Banks, Pawnbrokery. I'm surprised they even let us walk in the store, it's an active crime scene. This is where it happened, then, last night. That's right. The two thugs I told you about were obviously ransacking the place, looking for valuables. Guess you should get some sleep for your finals? Yeah, you should definitely do that. <laughs> I slept all day, that's what I did. Let me tell you what I did today. This morning, I was at work, and luckily, luckily, uh, DoorDash was available, so I went, fuck it, I'm gonna get like a crate of food from uh, White Castles, like a goddamn garbage disposal that I am. And then I bought it, got the crate, and I had like, what, like five sliders and some fries, and I went, this was a mistake, I can't eat all this shit. So then I put it inside the uh, fridge at my job. It might be there tomorrow, it might not be, who knows. <laughs> but that's what I ate, and then I haven't eaten nothing for the rest of the day. I came home and I slept, and I've been sleeping all day. That's how, what I've been doing. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for dropping by. See you later. But, apart from the policeman in here, you wouldn't know anything had happened. There's no sign of a disturbance. No, you're right about that, actually. In fact, if anyone 
It's the police who seems to be the ones doing the ransacking. I know what you mean. They, uh, they're like a gang of organized criminals, all dressed in black. Oi! I've heard that! Hi, Gregson. Yep. Oh, Inspector! Oh, Inspector! Good morning. Hmm, I suppose I ought to thank you for your vigilance last night. We got to the scene before it was disturbed, at least. Shame you let the two rogues get away, mind. Yes, I'm sorry about that. I thought you assigned extra men to the beat around here, Gregson. Now look what happened. Hurley's been injured because there wasn't enough police on duty. I mean, if anything, he's been probably saved because there was a dude on duty. He pretty he came pretty fast, actually. It was a pretty good response time. Oh, you, your ladyship. No one told me you were coming. I expect you take full responsibility for what happened to Hurley and see he has the very best medical care. Of course, your ladyship. The very best doctor in the capital are tending to him as we speak. And I don't think it's Runo's fault that the rogues managed to get away, is it? Chasing criminals is the police job. Absolutely, your ladyship. As you say, ma'am. As you say. The gent in black is totally blameless. Everyone's in agreement about that. But you believe that? He's like a completely different person, Iris. Talk about a personality change. Oh, where are my manners? Are you thirsty, your ladyship? Perhaps you like some juice? Some nice refreshing fresh <laughs> some nice refreshing fruit juice? Oh why? Are you thirsty, Gregson? I have some of my special herbal tea with me. If you like some. Jesus. What is happening? Ah, lovely. To very much. To very much. To very much. The thing's supposed to be thank you very much, but you know, I, I don't I don't know what they do with the localization about this, huh? It really hit the spot, your ladyship. I don't even recognize him like this. So why did he kiss her ass again? That was explained before, I think, right? Like, we gave we gave him... I don't even think it was explained before. Let's see. Her ladyship. Um, I can help notice, Inspector. What? Now with the sunshine? Well, there seems to be a marked difference between the way you talk to me and to Iris. Watch the sauce, Sonny. The sauce? I'm constantly looking for the sauce. You got the sauce? Where the sauce at? I'm a copper. And we don't go in for favoritism. But he's right. You treat us differently. It's because of those adventures of Herlock Shlom stories. That's why. Oh? I crop him. I crop him in. Oh, wow. I crop up in. I'm, I crop up in them. Don't I? Inspector Tobias Gregson. I crop up in him. That is, that is, that is difficult to say. <laughs> oh, well, yes, because you're a acquaintance of Hurley's. What did you write about the inspector, Iris? Um, I don't remember, really. It was one of Shlom's lines. Gregson is the smartest of the Scotland Yarders, is how he puts it. Oh, did I write that? And you know, you know what that one line did for me? The very next month, my pay doubled. Doubled, I tell you. Oh, that's amazing. All because everyone at the yard reads them. They read all the Herlock Schlum stories. They even set up a fan club for me. Of course, that explains everything. It was around the time that you became such a toady to me. Can you blame me? All it takes is one bad word from you and Slums can, it, Slums can change his tune about me. Gregson? No. The great detective will say he's getting quite overrated these days. So that's why he kisses her ass. He's all like, listen, because of what you wrote, I'm getting paid fucking double and my life is good. Keep writing the good word. I'll kiss your ass all day. 
Think about what would happen to my salary if it came out in the print, huh? The whole thing gives me the willies. I can't tell you how many nights of sleep I've lost just worrying about it. But that would never happen, Gregsy. Every month when the new... When the new rant... I can't say this word. Rants? Reds? New Rats magazine comes out. My hands are trembling as I turn the pages. Oh, how awful for you. Here, have some of my tea to settle your nerves. Just drink it. You fucking horse. You said you can't... Who said you can't make a horse drink, right? Ah, oh, lovely. Thank you very much. It really hit the spot, your ladyship. Eh, tea total. <laughs> <laughs> Man's constantly eating fish and chips and eating fucking drinking tea. Alright, what's the deal with Shalom's? Can you tell us anything about Mr. Shalom's? What's his condition? Sorry, I'm not at liberty to divulge the information. Scotland Yard matters are strictly confidential. Well, I know he's been operated at St. Siner Siners. I still. Mm, the Siners, I guess. Sinners? Siners. Signers. Signers, yeah. Why can't I see him? I'm family, you know. I'm terribly sorry, your ladyship. It's the hospital's policy. No visiting at all. Oh. That's weird. The bullet must have hit an artery if it... If his mid... Wow. In his midriff. He's lost a fair bit of blood. Oh, no. He didn't seem too bad in the first hour or so. But a hemorrhage like that is enough to make even the one and only Shlomes pipe down. Mr. Shlomes is a human like the rest of us, you know. Well, anyways, he's having emergency surgery right now. Emergency surgery? That, that kind of rhymes. <laughs> right now, they gotta stop the bleeding. But he'll be alright, Moni? They'll be able to make him better? Of course, your ladyship. He'll be right as rain before you know it. Really? How do you know? Uh, how do I know? Well, uh, um, because, uh, of course. Uh, yes, because Mr. Slums is such a great detective, that's why. We better pray the doctors have a better grasp of what needs to, what needs to make someone well. Oh dear, please don't die, Hurley. I report to your ladyship the moment I heard, I heard. The moment I hear, he's out of operating theater. Okay. What about the investigation? So, how's the investigation going, Inspector? Nothing to it, really. A very simple case. A uh, very simple case, this. There's some very definite... Uh, wow. There's some very definitive evidence. We're just about to change the drive... Wow. Well, just about to charge the driver we arrested last night, in fact. Driver? Oh, I'm sorry, driver. Diver. My bad. He's talking about Gina. Gina? You're gonna charge her? That's right. You should be able to bring her before the judge at the Bailey tomorrow. Definitive evidence, you say? What is it? Come on, show me. Your ladyship. As much as I wish I could oblige you, I... I mean... I'm afraid. I see. You've already captured the pair of thugs who broke in here last night, have you? What the- And you're going to put them on the stand as witnesses, aren't you? How- How did you know? How could you possibly know that? I had a feeling, that's all. Remind me never to try to keep a secret from Iris. So, you arrested the two men who shot Mr. Shlomes, have you? Well, yes. They were rounded up pretty quickly by the lads on the beat. And Miss Lestrade is being held at prison. She should be. That's assuming she hasn't left the key from the jailer, of course. Oh, yeah. There's something I was supposed to talk to you about, actually, Mr. Narahoto. Yeah, what is it? I've got an important message for you. I clean forgot I clean forgot about it until now. An important message? I wonder what it could it be? Alright, out with it. 
Are you gonna tell me what the important message is then, Inspector? Yeah, it's about the young lady who normally is by your side, your assistant. Dear Susie, is she alright? She's at the station, isn't she? Being questioned, I believe. Nope, not anymore. She had to head off. Head off? Where? To Lord Strongheart's office, of course. He summoned her. I have a... Why do I have a faint feeling that they're gonna tell her that she can't help me on this case? Uh, yeah, of course. I've forgotten about that. One of the whipstocks took her there in the yard's carriage after we finished questioning her. But she asked us to tell to tell you she didn't have the fare for the return journey and to go and meet her there. She's got a nerve using Scotland Yard as a blooming message service. I see. Well, thank you for passing on the. Thanks for passing that on, Inspector. Why does Susie have to go and see Lord Chief Justice? She didn't tell me. But I better head over to Lord Chief Justice's office to fetch her straight away. All right. Well, thank you, Gregson. Uh, if anything else goes up in the investigation, I guess I'll. I don't know. <laughs> I'll do something, I guess. Let's see. I just cracked my back. It felt really great. 16th of April, British Supreme Court, Lord Chief Justice. Office. Mikotaba. Yes? No matter how many times I've come here, I always get the same sense of oppressiveness somehow. Do you think this place is oppressive? I think it's normal. How so? I mean, look at the suite of armor. Sweet. Look at the suit of armor over there. You can't take that seriously, can't you? Maybe it thinks the same about you. So everything's clear with regard to tomorrow's arrangements, I trust? Yes. Thank you very much. Hmm. There they are. Susanna san and Lord Strongheart. I wonder what they're talking about. They both look very serious. Very good. There's nothing further to discuss. You may return to your lodgings. No doubt you have much to do in preparation for your return to your homeland. Fuck! I knew it! Wait. What did he just say? Your return to your homeland. susato son. Oh, um, Mr. Naruhoto. What was that all about? Ah, uh, Mr. Naruhoto, thank you for coming to collect your colleague. What is this about? What are you talking about, Mrs. Sato's return to her homeland? And... Tomorrow? But what about Jeannie's trial? You mean... She's been formally charged now. Oh dear. What the hell's going on, Mikotoba? Out with it. Speak up. Mrs. Sato? What's this all about? Oh, please don't concern yourself, Mr. Naruto. What the fuck you talking about? You're my assistant. It's only me going back to Japan. Your life here can continue just as is. It's not what I asked. Hmm? What happened? Why are you leaving? It's my father. He's fallen ill. Ah, shit. Oh, no. Professor Mikotoba. If I may. Yes, sorry. You must be the defendant. Ryanosuke Naruhoto, I believe. Yes, that's right. My name is Eugene Mikoroba. I'm professor of forensic medicine at Yume University. 
We received an in we received the intern can't read. We received the international telegram for the Empire of Japan informing us of the news. Ten days ago, father collapsed with the fever. The cause is apparently unknown. And it seems he grows weaker day by day. I don't believe it. As you are aware, the voyage from here to your country, capital Tokyo, takes some 50 days. I thought it would be prudent to hasten Miss Mis uh, be, 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 I can't read. <laughs> I thought it'd be prudent to hasten Mrs. Sato's departure as much as possible. Yes, absolutely. I will leave London first thing tomorrow morning. I can't believe this is happening. Well, who the hell is going to help me now? So Gina's been charged? She's ha has she appeared in court? Yes, she was formally charged a few hours ago, and the date of the trial has been set for tomorrow. No, not even 24 hours later? Gina. Ah, the Lestrade girl and the murder of the Baker Street pawnbroker, yes? And all too transpirit trans what transpirus transpir is that how you say that transpirus 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 that's the word I can read I can do it believe in me an all too transpirus case the pickpocket was clearly disturbed mid robbery and shot the man in a panic no the yard is overstretched as is without wasting time on these open and shut cases it's not a waste of time. Ginny would never do something like that. Mr. Naruhoto. Oh, yes, Lord Strongheart? In defense of your fine service to date, I shall overlook this young girl's insolence. But I have no recollection of admitting a child into my office. Leave. Now. Of course, Lord Strongheart. Criminals will tell the most palpable lies in order to invade justice. The police can ill afford the time to take to unravel all their untruths. Meanwhile, more crimes are perpetrated. We have far more serious matters with which to contend. Serious matters? Didn't Gregson mention something like this yesterday? Yes, Inspector Gregson made a similar remark yesterday. It's no concern of yours, though I'm sure I need not remind you of that. Three minutes precisely until my next meeting. You must excuse me. There's just one more thing, Lord Strongheart. Which is? It's Miss Lestrade's trial. I wonder if you might permit me to defend her. A timely suggestion. Sorry? The girl currently has no representation. But that's not fair! Yes, she may be a pickpocket, but she still deserves a fair trial. Do not misunderstand me, young lady. The government provides for those too poor to afford representation with the public defender. The accused need only sign the... the revelant... revelant? Yeah, that's the word, right? Revelant. Yeah, revelant. Not relevant, my bad. Relevant! Revelant. What the hell am I saying? The accused... <laughs> the accused need only to sign the relevant paperwork in the defense of... Ba barrister. Barrister. That's the word. Will be assigned to the case. However, the young girl in question has refused that right. Why would she do that? A question you do question you would do well to direct at Miss Lestrade. You'll find her at a local prison. Yes, thank you. Now then, it's time I was leaving. Good day to you. What a day. Gina charged with murder? Susana-san's about to leave? Come on, Mr. Nanahoto. Iris, you must make haste. But, Susie. 
You're leaving for Japan tomorrow morning, aren't you? Don't you have packing and things to do? As Mr. Narahodo's judicial assist- uh, ju I can't say the word sometimes. Judicial- judis- mm, judicial- fuck, I hate that word. As Mr. Narahodo's judicial assistant, my personal circumstances are of no consequence. My sole purpose remains to help in whatever way I can. Thank you, Mrs. Sada. That's a very pensive look. I think we ought to visit Gina first. In any case, I should like to wish her well before I leave. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go. If I'm honest, this has completely thrown me off. I'll just have to do what I can, as a lawyer. Alright, back to Gina, I guess. Gina, you got a visitor. She's here to see you. Oh, she's in questioning. Great. Oh, no, she's there. Huh? Hello again, Gina. Oh, come on. They still let you keep that thing? What are you lot doing here? To have the muzzle of that grenade launcher shoved out of- <laughs> shoved in our faces yet again, obviously. Hmm. I think I need to improve the way you load ammunition into that thing, don't I? Look. You can come as many times as I- as you like, but I ain't got nothing more to say to you. Gina? I wonder if you might hear me out. There's something I'd like to say. What? I'm sorry to say that I must reluctantly bid you farewell. Huh? Farewell? Tomorrow, I must begin my journey back home. To Japan. I fear we may never meet again. Uh, oh, right. I need the pleasure of meeting so- um, I mean, I mean the play what? <laughs> I had a stroke. I've had the pleasure of meeting so many lovely people here in London. I have so many wonderful memories. And yet, as things stand now, it will be a glum parting indeed. Our Iris is so miserable. Susie. Well, it ain't any of my business. Both Iris and Mr. Naruto believe you to be innocent, Gina. They put their faith in you. But somehow, you can't find it in your heart to put your faith in them. Yeah, that's right, I can't. What of it? It grieves me greatly to have to say goodbye to my friends when they are so clearly unhappy. Because of you. What? It's my fault? Yes. So, I have one final request, Gina, before our paths never cross. Right here and now. I want you to show both of them that you don't deserve the faith they've invested in you. Huh? Only by doing that will you truly be as alone as you claim to be. What are you talking about? What do you expect me to do, eh? You told us that everyone lies. So prove it. By admitting one of your own untruth, untruths, that, that is a way to word that. What about what you said before, Genie? You said something about unforgivable lies? You must tell Mr. Narahodo and Iris the truth now. That is my last request before I leave. My last request as a judicial assistant. No, I, I can't. Whatever these lies are, they're obviously weighing very heavily on Gina's mind. Gina, I could be wrong, but... Is it something to do with what happened two months ago? Something about the trial? The one in which Mr. McGilded was acquitted. In the case of that mysterious murder that took place inside the Omnibus. 
You were called as a witness by the prosecution. Is that what it was about? Yeah, you're right. Because in that trial, I lied. I lied like you wouldn't believe. Will you tell us about it now? Like you said, it all happened two months ago. The coppers got old of me and shelled me in the witness stand. And based on your testimony, Mr. McGilded was declared innocent. Yeah, well, the thing is, I lied a whole bunch of stuff. I knew it. What sort of things did you lie about? I was hiding under the seat that night. That was the truth. It was pitch black in the little cubby hole. I couldn't see anything, and then... I heard that loud thud, like someone falling on the floor. And that's when Mr. McGilded discovered you. Yeah. He pulled me out from under the seat and sat me next to the dead man. It weren't much light to be seen, uh, to be seen by, but when I looked at my hands, I had the cove's blood all over them. I was so scared, I couldn't even speak. You had his blood on your hands? In other words, it was Gina that the witness on the roof saw. <laughs> it was Gina that the witness on the roof deck saw, wow, on the roof deck saw through the skylight. That is roof deck. I mean, it's right, but it feels weird saying it. Then Mr. McGill that started asking you questions, I suppose. Who you were, and why you were hiding under the seat. Yeah, we did. Only, that's not all. What do you mean? I mean he threatened me. Threatened you how? He made me swear about what I've seen and what I've heard. And about what he's gonna do after the cove was found dead. He made me swear I wouldn't tell anyone about any of it. If I did, he said he let me. He let me scapper before the copper showed up. Scrapper? Scapper? Scaper? Scarper? Scrapper? <laughs> Gina, you must tell me everything you saw. Uh, everything you- wow. You must tell me everything you saw- uh, you swore to secrecy about. I can't say the words. What you saw, what you heard, everything. You saw Mr. McGilden made you swear- wait, what? Uh, you saw. You said Mr. McGilden made you swear not to tell anybody what you saw. But you were in pitch black compartment under the seat the whole time, weren't you? Yes, with Mr. McGilden sitting above your head, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's the truth, but... It was when I heard the thud of the cove hitting the floor, I let out a little scream. See? Couldn't help it. McGilda heard and dragged me out by my arm, and then that's when I saw it. It was on the floor next to the old geezer when I had been stabbed. A disc, all bright and shiny. A disc? Do you mean... Yeah, that's it. The one with the D took off of, took off of Windy Banks. So the music box disc was there on the floor of the omnibus? Not for long. McGilda spotted it right away. Picked it up, smart and, uh, smart, smartish, smartish, smartish and stuffed it into his pocket. So the disc. Was it in, was in the omnibus two months ago, at the scene of Mr. Mason's murder? And that bog trotter told me. I weren't to mutter a word of it, to no one. Hmm. Because it was so dark on the seat in the cab. I was staring, I was staring, I was straining my ears the whole time. After a while, I heard the door and the footsteps inside the cabin. Presumably, that was Mr. McGilda getting on board. Nah, not only him. Oh? Because I could definitely make out the footsteps of two people. 
In that case, it would seem like it was Mr. McGilded and the victim. Mr. Thrice fired Mason. I'm gonna miss you pulling out that book all the time, Mikotoba. It's my favorite thing you do. <laughs> In his testimony during the trial, Mr. McGilded claimed he slept during the carriage ride. But whenever I'm in the carriage, I'm taken with a fierce tiredness and I always succumb to it. In your own testimony, Gina, support it his. All I could hear was the Irishman snoring. Yeah, that wasn't exactly true. Neither of them was asleep. I could hear them talking the whole time, in low voices. What? what? What were they talking about? Sorry, I don't know. The sound of horses and the wheels was too loud. That still tells us something. Mr. McGilded and the victim knew each other. So McGilded was lying, and I suspected it. after the event. I knew it wasn't going to take long before someone raised the alarm that the bloke had been killed. Yes, you were quite right. The other passengers on the roof deck noticed very quickly. So when the cab came to a stop, McGilda told me to hide under the seat again. I climbed in and waited. The two cars up top ran off to get the coppers. Yes, Mr. Fairplay and Mr. Faust. Froust, my bad, not Faust. Right, and after they'd gone, Miguel had asked the driver to do him a favor. A favor? Now then, fella, what I need you to do is take this coat of mine and deposit it in nearby Pondbrook. And for your troubles, let's see now. I give you ten guineas. A nearby pawnbroker? Did you mean on Baker Street? Yep, he caught it. It was Wendy Banks. The coach he snapped up the mo uh, snapped. <laughs> the coach he snapped up the money and ran off to pop a, uh, to pop this coat as fast as he could. So there was n there was no one left in the carriage. He got to open the box under the seat and let me out of there, but not without conditions. I see. What were these conditions? What were Mr. McGilda's conditions? For letting you go free, I mean. I'm not telling a soul. I'm not for anything. About what I saw, what I heard. And there was something else as well. There's more? Yeah. This is the most important thing, Zed. I'm afraid sending the coachman on a little errand for me with some small changes in his hand. Wait, what? I'm sorry. I'm afraid. Why did I say that? <laughs> I'm after, uh, I'm after sending the coachman on a little errand. Wait, what? I'm after sending the, the coachman. What? This feels strange reading that. I'm after sending the coachman on a little errand for me with some small change in his hand. I'm after? What the fuck? Now then, did you hear what I asked him for? Did you see anything at all? At all? You asked him to pop off your weasel, right? Aye. The fiend's taken my taking me overcoat to the deposit to deposit with the pawnbroker hereabout. And I want you, lass, to take the redemption ticket for it. Do you understand? What? You want me to have the ticket? That's right. I'll come and fetch it from you later. Sometime within the next two months. You're to hang on to it until then. Is that clear? Whatever you do, don't lose it. All right then. In that case, I might happen to be, I might happen to be delayed at all. Wait, what? And in, and in case I might happen to be delayed at all, you're to go to the bond shop, Wendy Banks. So it is, and you're to extend the loan. Before the two months uh, before the two months is up. If you forget, the article will be forfeited, and any old fiend could come along and buy it. 
but I ain't got that kind of brass. It's 50 pounds. Here's 50. Here's 5 pounds. That should be enough. Do we understand each other, Glass? Don't try anything funny now. If you go against me... Yeah, I get it. Good. Now, one more thing. In a few days from now, you'll be visited by the police, I have no doubt. The coppers? Aye. They come asking to you take this come asking uh, can't speak. <laughs> Aye. They come asking you to take the stand of, in court to testify as a witness. So, let's just have a wee chat about that, shall we? What is it what is it that you might say? And what is it that you won't? That's a lot of silence. After he'd gone over it, I picked, I piked it. Got as far away from there as I could. He, he hid the pawnbroker's ticket in some bushes near the scene. I went to fetch it the next day, once it got dark. So my guild had planned it. And can horse, can horse, mm, can't say the word. It can horse, can horse, that's the word, right? Yeah, can horse, right? Co-horse. Co-horse. Whatever, and got Gina into giving false testimony. Bet you're ready to string me up, huh? I lied. In the big old courtroom, I told some cockers. Cockers? Crockers? Told some crockers. The thing is, he said it would make... It was, uh, he said he wouldn't make it, so we wouldn't live in East, East Ends no more. Uh, that's what he threatened me with. What a wicked man. He knew everything, what went on in the back slums. He knew we had no one to look after us. He was all just looking out of each... What? And we was all just looking out for each other, getting by together. So you mean, Mr. McGill would have... Eh, <sighs> in a heartbeat. He could have had the lot of us chased out of there if he wanted to. And then, where could we have gone? Nowhere. That's where. So, I didn't have no choice. Thank you, Gina. You're telling us everything. But, I'm for it now, eh? Go on, admit it. You must be livid. Well, you can make amends by doing me a simple favor. A favor? What? Sign the representation papers for tomorrow's trial. Eh? If you don't actually want me to represent you in court, you can rip it up later. But, we need the paperwork or we can investigate the police. Mm. My bad. I read that like it was a runoff sentence. <laughs> we need the paperwork or we can't investigate. The police won't let us. Investigate what? The scene of the incident last night. Mr. Shlums was shot, you see. You what? Early's having a big operation right now, Genie. Is it bad? Is, it, is he gonna be alright? So I'm just gonna be alright, right? That's why I wanna investigate. Mr. Shlums' sake, as much as anything. Right. So what you're saying is, if I sign the bit of paper, everyone's happy. Is that it? Something like that. Mrs. Sato? Yeah, of course. I have the representation papers here. I... I don't need no one to stick out for me, though. No lawyer or nothing. Poor Jenny. She seems so lonely. Hmm. Paper signed by Gina to put me in charge of her defense. Showing this to Scotland Yard detectives gains us access to the crime scene. Well, at least this should mean we can investigate the scene at Wendy Banks now. Yes. And perhaps we can come back and visit Jeannie when we're all done. I 
I feel like we finally cracked Gina. She's opened up to us at last. And now I have to now I have a representation papers. No one else knows just what a responsibility that is. Anyways, but now it means Inspector Gregson can't stop us from investigating at Wendy Banks. Although, something tells me he's not gonna be happy about this. Alright. I was waiting for that wonderful to be continued sign. <laughs> I'm looking at a time and I'm like, I do technically can go for like another hour. Mm, but I think it would be best if I stopped here right now, right? <clears throat> I think this is a good stopping point. I feel like it's a good stopping point, hopefully, right? Take a bit of a break because I've been like super tired for like the last couple of days, honestly, and very busy, so busy. So stupidly busy. <laughs> Both with work and life and a bunch of other things going on. Just constantly eating up my time. And I still, I actually still want to take a little bit of extra time to, uh, like, finish editing some stuff. And, like, grabbing all the streams that I've done and putting that on YouTube. Because I would like to get that all done as fast as possible. Honestly. And, like, free up some space on my hard drive. So... I think this is going to be a good point for me to stop right now for tonight. If I do stream more Ace Attorney later this week, please keep an eye out on the Twitter. It's right there on the screen. I'm going to send out a notification through that. And if you're if you follow me on Twitch, you're going to get a notification that I'm going live too anyways, right? You know, whether you have it on your phone or if you happen to be on Twitch at that time. Um, Let's see. What else do I want to say? If you're watching this on YouTube, first of all, thank you very much. I hope you're fairly entertained if you want to check any of my other stuff out please do it helps out a lot and what helps out even more is if you like and comment on the video that helps out a lot that's what youtube looks for they look for uh engagement and stuff like that subscription numbers don't mean shit to them um i think that's it for youtube that's all i want to say right now i mean nothing has really changed there's still uh the vampire playthrough and fucking me uploading both Kingdom Hearts Proud Mode uh, and Persona 4. And I still have some other streams that I'm holding on to, right? That I kind of want to upload like one-offs. Like I said, oh, damn, I still got to upload Ratchet and Clank and fucking, um, whatchamacallit. And uh, what's the other game we just beat? Other small horror kind of indie game. What, what is it called? Simulacrum, right? Simulacra. So... I'm gonna have to edit those out and get those and get those out in a timely manner, hopefully, right? Um other than that, uh nothing else new is happening on the channel as of right now. If you're watching this on Twitch, first of all, thank you for watching live. I greatly appreciate it. If you want to leave me a follow, that's very helpful. But more importantly, if you do if you do wanna make things a bit easier for me when it comes to streaming and stuff like that and make it able for me to stream more then you can subscribe to me, right? Uh, if you have Twitch Gaming or whatever, Twitch Gaming, what am I saying? If you have an Amazon Prime account, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you have a free subscription that you can give to anyone at no additional cost for you. So if you have that subscription and you want to give it to me, it's greatly appreciated. It helps out a lot. And I think that's everything I want to say as of right now. Yes. Oh, and the other thing is, if you ever want to send me anything on, uh, like, if you ever want to, like, send me a tweet or something like that, there's the Twitter right there. If you want to send some type of fan art or something like that, you can send it there on Twitter, at me on Twitter. And, uh, I'll make sure to put that in to the stream at the beginning of the stream, where I'm showing off all the art and stuff. So, that's pretty much it for right now. I'm gonna go take a break, probably have something to eat, and get to editing some videos and recording some shit. So, as always, I want to say thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care. I'm a chef, chef